Reading Trigon was one of the most anticipated journeys for me that I wanted to go on ever since I recently started reading manga. And boy, what a journey this has been. And to be quite honest, it didn't have to do much of anything other than be pretty much just as good as the anime. It didn't have to outshine it, it didn't have to exceed it, it didn't have to outdo it, it just kind of had to be just as good or at least close, because let's be honest, that's a pretty fucking high bar to hit in the first place. And I am extremely happy to say that it did just that. So this week I finished up reading Trigun, and there will be a little bit of a shift in the video because I burned through the final four volumes, so this will be me talking about four volumes instead of two, which really isn't that big of a deal because, boy, once you get going on those last four volumes, it would have felt silly to split it right in the middle, like, for real. So in these last four volumes, the manga goes through another pretty massive shift in the what's the way it's being done. The last one being in between volume seven and eight when they lost communications with all the satellites and it really just became like this no man's land with, <laughs> I just realized what I said, with no communications between anybody and, the, and it's just, it got 10 times worse in the scenarios of what was happening and the whole vibe and the whole feel of the manga changed, the arc was flying, you know, that big shift that happened. And this time it shifted into the climax and all the final battles, but at the same time, the Earth fleet arrives and now there's like this space battle that's happening up above the planet as well as everything that's happening down on the planet, which is massively different than anything else that we've had up until this point. And some of the space scenes and the stuff that's being drawn up in outer space, just the ships, the whole vibe of the outer space battle that's happening I don't know why, but for some reason it gives me some pretty strong, like, Knights of Sidonia vibes, and I think it's just the art in general, but I'm not entirely sure because it really is nothing like that manga at all. Anyway, Nigtao himself is clearly aware of how big of a shift this is and just how far we've come from the beginning of the anime to where we are now, because he even makes a joke about it when Meryl and Millie are up on top of a building or something and they're reminiscing about the good old days and don't you remember back in the days when anything could happen at any time and this that and the other and out of nowhere this big giant just bursts through a building being followed by Vash and it literally plays out just like a scene that would have happened in say volumes like two or three of Trigun maybe even all the way back to OG Trigun before it was even maximum and it's just and then it's over and it literally they don't even like really finish the fight it's just over in the blink of an eye and it's kind of like a throwaway gag but it's just a real self-aware moment of where we've come from where we are and just kind of I don't know that it was a brief moment of levity and it really hit home for me as I was reading it but other than that throwaway gag the most of the first volume that I read, volume 11, takes place in a pretty quiet place, a pretty calm place, the calm before the storm, so to speak, and everybody kind of preparing and bracing and getting everyone in the right place for what's about to happen. And we really could use this calm moment of silence in this volume, first because it's just nice to have a moment of silence after losing Wolfwood in the last volume, and secondly, once the fighting does start, it will not stop, and it gets crazy. And then, interestingly enough, when the fighting does start, it actually starts with a one-on-one -on -one fight between Vash and Knives. There's no, like, real build-up and work-up to it. That's just the starting-off point, is them facing each other, and I'm here for it. And as usual, as much as it is that bombastic, completely over-the-top crazy action that this guy is good for but at the same time as usual it is just as much that as it is a conversation between two characters and that conversation as usual is really a conversation about philosophy and human nature and just the opposing ideas and the opposing ideals that they're really trying to force upon the other person as they go through the fight 
which is kind of crazy to even think about when a fight looks like this and at the same time you're expected to focus on an actual philosophy and philosophizing and conversations and what? It's like, why don't you look at this while we sit here and contemplate the depths of human nature? Anyway, eventually everybody else is going to show up like Legato and Elendria and uh, Livio. And at that point, Knives pretty much runs away and he goes off to fight the space battle with the incoming human fleet, Earth fleet, whatever you want to call it. And then we now have this four-way battle between the, the rest of them with, of course, Vash and Livio on one side and Legato and Elendria on the other. And I want to say that I really enjoyed Livio. He is just such a charming and endearing character in these last couple of volumes, and there's truly something special about just his behavior and the way he acts in general. Considering that he's been essentially a bad guy literally his entire life, he'd never known what it is to be good or what it feels like to be good. And it's just so charming watching him just how playful he seems and how much he seems to be enjoying being on the right side of the line for once. He literally seems genuinely happy to be one of the good guys. And it's just, it's so engaging to watch or to read as you watch him go through all of this. And it just feels like he's really experiencing something genuine for the first time. And then you get to experience it with him. And it's such a charming thing. And I want to say just how important that is that you genuinely feel that way about this character because it is so easy to look at him while you're reading it and almost feel bitter about the fact that it's him and not Wolfwood because you're somehow still trapped in this missing and longing for Wolfwood, or at least I was because he was such a dear character to me. I loved him so so much and I miss him so deeply. So you see Livio and you want to be bitter because you want it to be Wolfwood. But at the same time, like I said, he's just so charming to read because he genuinely is experiencing something. You feel that he's genuinely experiencing something for the first time. This idea of being one of the good guys and it just makes it so good to watch and to read and you feel good for him and it makes it feel less awful that it's not Wolfwood. It was a very fine line that Nigtao had to walk with this character and he did so well with it. Oh my gosh. And then over on the other side of the line, you've got Legato and for the first time in the manga now, we get Legato's backstory and he was essentially a sex slave in the past and he was saved by knives and now he fights for knives because knives is essentially his savior from that past horrible life and as far as i can tell knives did not save him on purpose and knives couldn't give two fucks about him now but legato's still so enthralled and invested in him that he's going to go ahead and fight for him which just kind of makes it worse for Legato, like you had this life before that was this awful and now you are going to fight for your savior who couldn't care less if you existed or not. You know, that's, sorry, that's a dark existence start to finish. But anyway, we get the big end battle and the big end battle is exactly that. It's big. It's crazy, it is intense, it's messy, and I've said it before, these fight scenes don't track well, but boy are they drawn cool. Like, it is not necessarily easy to follow from one panel to the next. I don't think paneling is one of um, Nigtail's strong suits, but drawing cool shit is. Anyway, ultimately... Livio's gonna take out Elendira, and just like in the anime, in this one, Vash will ultimately have to make the choice to kill, and that person that he's going to kill will be Legato, proving once again that as much of a pacifist as Vash is, as hard as he tries, and as perfect as he tries to be, sometimes the only choice is the ugly one. Sometimes he has to do that one thing that he really, truly vowed 
never to do. Or at least it's the best option, if it's not the only option. And he ultimately chooses not to let it break him. He still continues to move forward one step at a time, one foot in front of the other. And even after killing Logato, he's going to go on to inspire change in some unlikely places. Anyway, knives get separated from the other plants, and the humans will actually ultimately save them by offering them a life support, and this time asking nicely if they can work together and help each other instead of just, you know, using them for their power. Maybe this time they'll do it together, but the right way. And now again, Vash will have to face off against knives, this being the last time they will have to do so. And right in the middle of them going against each other, they will get attacked from another source. And when they get attacked, Vash will end up using the very last bit of his powers, saving Knives' life. And we find out they were being attacked by that plant that's left over from Earth. And Livio walks up and puts a gun to her head and says, I must apologize for my treatment of a guest who's come all this way. But I cannot let you do that. I know you've been through a lot, but you should give him a chance. You won't be sorry. Welcome to No Man's Land. One of my favorite moments, just period, one of my favorite, I just loved it so much. Welcome to No Man's Land. And now we get our actual ending of the manga, our ending for Vash and Knives. And I know I said at one point when I realized that I thought their hair turning black was ultimately killing them, and... I thought that in the end of this, at that point in time, Vash might not make it out alive. He might end up dying in the end of the story. And I th was at the time thinking that would make a poignant ending to this kind of a story. Him sacrificing himself and having to lay down his life at the end. And I am so glad that that did not happen because the ending that we got is so much better than that. It starts with a shot of knives dragging Vash up to some humans and begging them to save his life which of course they do and then as payment for saving the life of his brother who has used all of his power saving knives knives then uses the last of his power to make an apple tree for the humans before going off by himself into the desert and now they both have completely black hair they have no power left as far as i could tell and they don't apparently die when they run out of power so are they just humans now are they just normal people they just can't do anything special they're just gonna have to live out their lives as normal people that would be my assumption but i have nothing to back that up other than the fact that i i'm gonna guess that one but anyway, after all of that said and done, Vash saved Knives' lives. And because he saved Knives' lives, and Knives is the most dangerous person in all of human existence, the Earth people who just came here now put a bounty on Vash's head and go out hunting for him. And the manga ends right where it started, with everybody hunting down Vash because Vash has a bounty and the charge is being led by Meryl and Millie, who are now reporters trying to talk to him about it and it was just everything came full circle everything came back right to where it was it was so good and now knives is off out there somewhere but this time he's not up to no good he's just out there living his life probably as a hermit somewhere just trying not to make any waves i would imagine but it was just absolute perfection i cannot explain i mean i like i said i thought them dying vash dying and laying down his life for the good of mankind would have been a poignant and good ending and it would have been but this was so much better it made my soul so much happier to see knives be reformed and vash get to live but now they're just gonna have to go out and do their thing but at the same time we get to go back to the beginning and we get to get vash back and meryl and millie and everything just kind of went back to the status quo and i read some grim grim shit 
some dark stories. And you know what? Sometimes it's really good to just get a happy ending, especially when the story has earned it and it feels deserved. I don't know if I would call this ending perfect, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to give it a 9.5. It was damn close. Anyway, as always, everybody, the link for my Patreon's in the description below. The link for my Discord's in the description below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.